What's up everybody, JJ here, and I've got the brand new Creality K1 Max here in the studio, along with the original K1 here. I've done a ton of printing on this new printer. This is a bigger version of the original K1 and also a better version. I was impressed with how many little things they added on here. It's not just a bigger printer. They really did a lot of nice things here to make it a much better printer. So today we're gonna to talk about those new features, compare it to the original K1, compare it to the bamboo offerings, and then we're gonna go through and cover all of these print results. I've done a ton of printing here, so there's a lot we have to talk about. Then we're gonna cover which of these printers is right for you. We live in a golden age of 3D printers. All of these are amazing printers. It's really fun to make these reviews when the printers are this good. Let's get right into it. So the big spec difference here in the K1 Max is that it is a full 300 millimeters in all axes. 300 by 300 by 300, you can fully max that out. The original K1 was only 220 by 220 by 250. Here's sort of a height difference between them. This was the K1, this was the K1 Max. So 50 millimeters difference there can add up to a lot. This helmet back here, for example, at least the middle part of it, so not these ear cups or the visor in the middle, could be fully printed on this printer, but it would have to be sliced into parts on the original K1. So having that little bit of extra volume can sometimes be a huge difference. The physical changes here, the top part is glass and feels a lot more premium here. The plastic on top of the original K1, it works. And for me, I don't do a ton of high temperature printing. It's just nice to have when you need it. This one is a nice tempered glass top and a tempered glass front panel. The sides are still acrylic. Inside here comes pre-installed with some added smarts. There's an AI camera and an AI LiDAR. It's really just a webcam and a LiDAR sensor on there, but they do some machine learning to add some extra features on there. That camera can be bought and added onto the original K1, and I did notice on the K1, now it lists the LiDAR as an optional accessory. So hopefully, both of these would be able to be added onto the original K1. And that would be really cool to see these features being added to the original K1. Since they both have the same processor in both of them, I don't think it's a processing limitation between these two printers. The webcam here can be used for time lapses, remote monitoring of the prints, and AI error detection. So it, sh it should be able to tell if a print is failing, it's turning the print to spaghetti, it should be able to stop it. So far, they still are working on the software, and it does say that inside here that they are still working on it. It did mess up once on me. It thought some stringing on a print was a failed print, so it stopped it. Then I went in there, saw it's not bad, and resumed the print. And so after that, I did turn it off and didn't do much testing of that functionality. The time lapses come out decent quality. They're only 720p, not super high bit rate. And currently, I couldn't find a setting to be able to move the print head to the side, and then it take a picture, and then it move back and continue on. I'm sure that's something they could easily add in software. It's another case of it works, but with some firmware updates, it could be great. The LiDAR is another feature where I think it will continue to get better. Currently, it's used for mesh bed leveling. It says it does over a million points of bed leveling. I think probing the nozzle a handful of times across the bed is plenty good enough for me to get a good enough first layer on there. Here are the bed levelness tests. This is the full 300 by 300 millimeters squared, printed in a single sheet and it fully printed. It's not perfect. It is a little bit thinner down here, maybe a little thicker up here, but in general, I would call this a successful print. You can fully utilize the 300 by 300 millimeter bed, and that's really cool. This is a pre-sliced file, so it's not using the full 220 by 220, but in general, it works at a similar quality. There's a little bit thinner down here, maybe a few bits of over extrusion. I would say probing the bed adequately levels the bed and you can fully use the entire bed using this method. They also say in here you can turn on motion advance. I tried to do a little bit of testing with it both on or off to see if I could really tell a difference in the prints and they both look good so I can't really tell much of a difference. So I need to do some more testing. Maybe if I bump up speeds and accelerations and try turning it on and off. I didn't find it drastically to improve my prints. It's nice to have, but if it wasn't here, I would love this printer just as much. A few other new features on the back. There's a activated charcoal filter here. This is another one where I'm not sure why it's not on the original K1, but you could easily print a module on that one. And I probably will print a module for there to be able to stick one of these on there. It's just a nice thing to have. I always like having filters on my printers. So this is great to have one back there. Also around the back, there's an ethernet port. 
that's great for a lot of people don't have great Wi-Fi wherever they want to put their printer, whether it's in a garage, in a workshop. I've heard a lot of people don't have good reliable Wi-Fi wherever they have their printers. So it's just a nice thing to have to be able to plug it in physically through Ethernet. Another big difference is that the bed here is AC powered, so it can heat from room temperature up to 60 Celsius in about a minute and a half, way faster. So the whole thing, since there is a ceramic heater in there, this whole thing can get heated up super quickly, get your print started really fast. I'm usually not a huge fan of AC powered beds. There, it just needs to be done correctly to make it safe. And I did check under there. It does look like everything's wired correctly. Everything's properly grounded, really good strain relief on cables. It looks really well done. I'm more afraid of AC powered beds on cheap printers when they're not properly installed. That's when things could get a little bit hairy. But this looks great and I know a lot of people love AC powered beds for that quick heat up time. The bed material here, I have learned since my original K1 review, this is a smooth PEI plate. They say you should apply glue stick, you don't have to apply glue stick. I stopped using it on the other one and this one, it works great. I did take a little chunk out on one of the TPU prints. So if you're using TPU, the glue stick might help the prints release easier, so be careful around really sticky TPU. Another thing I noticed, they give you this whole set of tools and accessories to get going, but there's a bimetal nozzle here. It's the same one that's on here. It's got a hardened steel tip, so it should resist wear really well, but the rest of the nozzle is brass, which should heat up really well. But they give you an entire replacement heater. This is the heater, heat break, and nozzle and silicone sock that goes around there. They give you really everything you need to get going. All the tools you could need, glue stick, extra grease, an entire kilogram of filament. That's just a nice premium thing to get out of the box. Usually on printers they give you the smallest spool of filament they can or just a tiny little coil of filament. It's nice that when you're spending a lot on a printer like this, you get everything out of the box. So what comes in this box you can get printing that first day. This kilogram should last you a few days at least. Setup of this machine was extremely easy. You pull it out of the box, you pull out the foam. It's the same as the original K1. It just worked great, super easy. It runs through an automated check where it checks all the systems on here, makes sure everything is working well, and then auto runs through an input shaper routine. One note about running the input shaper routine, you can go into the settings and rerun it, and you should rerun it if you move it to a different table. Input Shaper will measure the resonances. Currently I'm on a table on wheels right here. And so this is gonna have a lot of resonances. So it's gonna be compensating for huge resonances. And if I move this to a very stable table, like I normally am gonna have it on, go in there and rerun it, you'll get really good results. The final upgrade and probably the biggest upgrade over the original K1 is whatever they've done to the extruder now. And I hope they start shipping the original K1 with this new extruder. This top filament release lever now has a matte metal finish to it versus my K1 has a glossy finish lever to the top of it. So I'm not sure what they did different apart from changing what type of material this lever arm is made out of. This one is a really more substantial click and really holds onto the filament well. A lot of people had issues with the original K1's extruder not being strong enough to pull it all the way through the reverse Bowden tube. And this one has a few bends and turns to it, so I was really worried we were gonna have the same issues here. But this thing is pulling great. No under extrusion issues on any of these prints so far. On my K1, I did have to put a Volcano CHT nozzle on there, and that did fix a lot of the under extrusion issues. So currently it prints great, but I can't push the speeds like I can on this one. This one can really handle the speed. Another thing that's been improved since I did the original K1 review is that their slicer software has gotten a lot better. They've added in so many new profiles. There's one for Silk PLA, so it will slow down the prints a little bit and it, it looks a lot shinier than using the generic PLA settings. There's also a really nice TPU setting. We'll go through this when we cover all these printers. It is nice to see that they keep working on that software and these profiles are a lot better than when I did the original K1 review. So now I can just select which material I'm using, send it to the printer and all of these prints turned out great. So here's a bunch of different tests I've been doing on this printer, a bunch of different prints, a bunch of different materials to really test it out, see what works. This is a PLA, printed great. It prints in place with this spinning helicopter blade. It also creates a really good bridging test here on the tail. I did drop it on the ground, so the tail did break off there. But other than that, the bridging tests work really well, and the helicopter blade spins really well. Here's the 16 minute Benchy. It turned out all right. It does have a lot of artifacting showing up here, but that's kind of to be expected on these speed Benchies. 
a lot of detail did come through, which is always impressive. But it does have a lot of clean lines, good overhangs, good dimensional accuracy. Next, we can move on to TPU, and that was what I was most impressed with. This pink TPU is just an Overture brand TPU. I first printed it, and it did have some of these gaps and holes on the top. So then I added one extra top layer, and this one turned out almost perfect. This thing is so good for TPU, just for a default profile. I didn't do any tuning except for adding one extra top layer. Next up, I printed this dinosaur. I forgot to add supports to this print, so the bottom of it didn't turn out great. But from the mid layer up, I think it turned out great. Next up, we move on to some high temperature filaments. This blue gecko is ASA. This is a really difficult print to do without a brim or anything. It's a single line of zigzag filament on the base, and ASA is so prone to warping. It's really impressive that all the way out to all the fingers and the giant zigzag tail worked great, printed great. This thing is really stable. There was a little bit of stringing that happened on some of these top layers, but not enough to stop the spring to it. This is a white PETG whale shark. I did an articulated model because articulated models are always hard to get all the parts sticking down really well and especially with PETG. The enclosure works great to get these high temperature filaments sticking well. So if you print a lot of PETG, this is a great option. And here straight off the printer we've got ABS parts. These are Sherpa mini parts. I wanted to print a functional print to see how well it could handle the dimensional accuracy of ABS. It's nice to see the print stick and hold on through the entire print. So here's what I'm talking about with these vertical fine artifacts. It shows up on these silk prints. This one was printed on the K1 Max and it shows up as these vertical lines across the entire print. It's not so visible on matte filament but the silk filament really can see it. And this is Extreme Studio Lights very zoomed in. It's the same thing you can see on the K1. It's not ringing. It's these odd artifacts showing up. This one was printed on the P1P and you can see those same artifacts showing up here. Now it's time we talk about bamboo printers. So the only bamboo printer I actually have to compare it to is the P1P, and I do have an AMS unit on top for swapping filaments. And a big difference here is gonna be the size. 300 by 300 by 300, 256 by 256 by only 250 tall. They say it's 256 tall, but if you try to slice that tall, you really can't. They say if you removed certain parts of it, you could get that full 256 tall. I don't know, I just feel like it's false advertising to call it 256 when you can't use 256. So this one has the same Z height as the K1. This ripple vase was printed on the P1P, gold was printed on the K1, and the tall one was printed on the K1 Max. The next thing to mention is prices between these printers and how they compare. The P1P is now on permanent sale down to $600, which matches the MSRP of the K1. The K1, on the other hand, is usually on sale, and I do have a coupon and link in the description. If you use it, it really helps me out. If you're looking at buying one of these, you don't have to. I think the current code is 30 bucks off, but I will keep that updated if any new codes come along and new sales. The K1 Max is $900 MSRP, but I have a coupon code down there for 50 bucks off. So this is $850. The P1P has an upgraded version that comes fully enclosed and that's $700. So they are all kind of different sizes and all fitting in at different price ranges. But there are a few other things that I really like about the K1 a lot more than the P1P. The P1P has this horrible screen on here. This is an LCD screen with a four-way D-pad and a few clicky buttons and the input lag is really bad on it. It's just not a joy to use to control this printer using the screen. The K1 printers, on the other hand, have a full color display, touch screen, really responsive, really easy to use. It's just really useful to use that to control the printer, to see how much time is on a print. All these things you can do on there that I really hate using this one. So I barely use it anymore. I think mine might have some issues to it as well but I didn't notice, I don't know how long it's had issues because I never use it anymore. I just use the computer software to control the printer. I could do a whole video comparing all the little differences, but I'll run through a few of the big ones. The bamboo printers run input shaper every time you start a print. So I timed it on the computer. If you say upload print, it takes eight minutes until it starts putting down the first line, which is really disappointing if a print is gonna fail to waste 10 minutes before you can know if a print is failing. This one takes closer to four minutes before you know if that print is failing. It's just really nice 
it's a way quicker, you don't need to run input shaper every single time if you're not moving your printer around. If you start to get ringing, run it again. It's a little nitpicky thing and it's not that big of a time difference. I just like that this one's faster. Next one, Creality doesn't require you to log into anything to use the full functionality of the slicer and uploading prints. The Bamboo slicer does require you to log in to be able to send prints over. You might be able to use the micro SD card if you load the G code onto it and then take it over to the printer, but that's missing a huge functionality of a Wi-Fi connected printer. This one also uses their cloud a lot more or tries to use the cloud. You can use LAN only option to upload it locally, but if you turn this printer off for a while and then turn it back on, that code can change. And so then you gotta go back to your printer and re-enter that code. It's just a clunky process. So I went to using their cloud again versus this printer just uploads locally really quick, really easy. When it comes to the apps between them, the Bamboo app is way better, but I still don't care for either of these apps. The Bamboo app is simple, clean, straightforward, but I don't like how slow it is. Sometimes the notifications will pop up on my phone 30 minutes after a print's done. A print will finish, I'll go take it off the print bed, start the next print, go back to editing a video, and then I'll get a notification saying, oh, that print was successful. It's like, I know, I'm already printing something else. Why are you telling me this now? It's a fine app. It's just not like a great app. I wouldn't give it five stars, I would give it three stars. The Creality app, I would give zero to one star. It's big and cluttered and trying to be too many things, little pop-ups and all these things. During the K1 review, I downloaded it and then deleted it almost immediately and haven't reinstalled it. And I really don't need it for my workflow I don't need the app. And there are a few other little issues, and I know Creality's gonna watch this, so I'm more mentioning these things because I know they can fix them. The K1 has improved so much with all the firmware updates since I initially reviewed it, and I'm sure this one will get way better in the future. And the first one is that I can't access the Clipper config file in there. It is using a version of Clipper, and they said they will get around to releasing that. It's just one of those things for an advanced user that wants to get in there and dive into the config file and customize and change things to however I want to use it, it'd be really cool to have an advanced tab somewhere that I could get in there and really access it. That would make things way better for a power user that wants to advance things and wants to change and tweak things to however you want the printer to work. So I would love to see that released and the ability to access, tweak and change things would be really cool. The next thing they need to continue working on are the AI features in there. The camera and LiDAR are good to have, but I know they can continue to get better. And I know they will. They said they are working on it. That's just one of those things I think I'm really excited for. Currently it works fine, but it's not a showstopper feature that's really making this vastly better than the original K1. So overall, I'm super impressed with the K1 Max. I wasn't expecting to like this printer so much more than the original K1. It's a lot of little features this one has that really makes it more than just a bigger original K1. A lot of these things I think could be transferred over to the original K1 to make it a very comparable printer. If you take this extruder over there, the camera, the LiDAR, the air filter on back. The K1 has been my most used printer in the last few months since I did that review. It is the one I go to but this one is now gonna be my go-to because this extruder is so great, being able to monitor it through the camera. LiDAR is great. I hope they keep improving it, working on that. Having an air filter on the back, that's always great. Health and safety, I'm all for it. So overall, who would I recommend any of these printers for? The K1 Max is a top of the line, best printer I've ever reviewed with a large build volume, fully enclosed. The K1 Max is gonna be your go-to. This is a great printer. If you're more budget conscious, the K1 is a great price for the printer. You get so much printer there at an amazing price. The Bamboo printers, for me, the best thing they have is the AMS system. The ease of use there for filament swapping, for multicolor printing is just really great and really user-friendly. Creality doesn't have anything yet to compete with the AMS, so if that's a huge deal breaker for you, then Bamboo is kind of the only option you've got. But anyway, I think that wraps it up. If there's any more questions you have or things I didn't cover, let me know in the comments down below. I might do a follow-up video if there are enough questions. And a reminder, in the description, there are some links and coupons that really help me out if you use them, if you are planning on buying any of these printers. But as always, thank you for watching. Go out there, create something amazing today, and I'll see you in the next video.